Let's talk about ship combat. Let's talk about space attacks. Let's talk about ships. Hello everyone, welcome to The Maple Table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss all things around role-playing games, so if that is your wheelhouse, then love to have you hit that subscribe button and that uh, bell notification so that you know when my content is available. Today's going to be the start of a multiple-part series around spaceship combat. One of my subscribers asked me to talk about this, and I do intend to do that. There's just, again, a lot to cover. You like picking the difficult stuff there, Ed. Today we're going to touch on some of the basics around starship combat, so the uh, the getting started, if you will. There are five roles that you can fill in your starship with your crew of starfinders, so we'll talk a little bit about them. Starship combat is broken up into three phases per round. So there's your engineering phase, there's your helm phase, and then there's your gunnery phase. In each of these phases, there are specific actions that you can do depending on what type of role you're filling in the starship. The first of the starship roles would be the captain. Knowing their weakness, I sent wave after wave of my own men at them. The captain can act in any phase. It should be noted you can only have one captain per starship, and depending on what action the captain is taking, they will tell you when they get to go in the turn order. Next is the engineer, everybody's favorite. The engineer's job is to keep your ship operational, those shields humming, and your reactor core not exploding. We need more power, Scotty. I'm giving her all she's got, Captain. If I push it any harder, the whole thing will blow. You can have as many engineers on your ship as you want. Next, we have the gunner roll. This one should be pretty easy to figure out. Shooty, shooty, bang, bang. You can have as many gunners as you have weapons on your ship. Next will be the pilot. You can, of course, only have one pilot, and they are notably different than the captain. The captain and the pilot are not the same thing. The pilot gets to keep you out of harm's way. Last but not least is the science officer. Science officers use the ship scanners and different tools to harry the computer systems of your enemies or to scan other planets. Point of note here, if you have the core rulebook, it will list out all of these that I'm going to cover. The character operations manual, I've done a review of that and I will put that up here so you can take a look at that there. The character operations manual fixed a few things with Starship Combat, so if you don't have a copy of this, I would highly suggest that you pick this up because there was a few gaps from the core rulebook that the character operations manual solved notably around the science officer position. What the character operations manual added was the ability for science officers or that science officer role to be done with either the science skill or the mysticism skill. And they did this because magic users were very limited in what they could do aboard a starship when it comes to combat. And you can have as many science officers as you want on your ship. What does a basic space combat look like? Well, it follows these turns. Everybody rolls their initiative, so you decide who is acting and when. The first phase of combat would be the engineering phase. All the engineers on your ship will get to take one action, either giving a boost to the shields, repairing some system damage. There's a few things that they can do. Engineering actions are deemed to have been resolved at the same time, so it doesn't matter which one you resolve first. Next phase is the helm phase. This is where your pilot gets to shine. Your starship pilot will attempt a piloting check, which they should be good at. The higher the number, the lower you move in the turn order, which is backwards compared to the rest of initiative. The reason for this is because the higher skill check from the pilot means the better reaction time they have to position themselves from all the other ships that have been moving. So it gives you the better strategy because you know who's going to move first and you can react better to it. That's the reasoning behind it. If you've done well in the helm phase, the gunnery phase is going to be very easy for you because once your ship has moved, then you get to open fire with all your weapons. If you've gone first and the ship that you were going to shoot has moved out of your line of fire, too bad, you can't shoot them. All of this space combat should be taking place on a hex grid. It does not work very well if you do it on squares. This has been part one of the Starfinder Starship Combat. So I hope you've enjoyed getting to know some of the, the basic overview of how Starship Combat works. In part two, I'm gonna go over in more detail some of the actions you can take in the different phases of combat. 
I'm gonna put this video and part two when it's ready in my Starfinder Basics playlist, which I will also put up here. So please check out, uh, please check out those playlists. Thank you to all my subscribers and to all my viewers. If you're new here, would love to have you hit that subscribe button. If you found today's content useful, hit that like button. My name's Nathaniel. You've been watching The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.